All right, everybody. Welcome to CNT 125 Lab Night. Tonight we're going to be working on Professor Brown's CNT 125 Online Lab. I'm Professor Bridgehouse. I'm in my basement with my wonderful dogs. And we're going to build this network here, get them all communicating with each other, and then do a remote access piece. All right, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we gotta do is look at the cabling on your map for those, you know, for those who are doing the lab with me. You should have a map that goes along with the lab. Over here on the right-hand side, we've got a 4321 router. We're gonna connect that to the 2811 router using a crossover cable. We're gonna hop down here to our cables, get that dotted one right there. We're gonna connect this to Fast Ethernet 01 and run it over to here. 2 gigabit 0000, zero, zero, zero. just like so. Then we're going to come over, we're going to grab a straight through cable, this guy right here, plug it into fast ethernet 00, zero drop it into port 24 on our switch, get a couple straight through cables, and plug these into our switch, doesn't matter where. I'm just going to go ahead and use one. And I'm gonna, oh, I'm sorry about that. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here. Plug this laptop in to, I'm gonna put him on seven. All right. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Let's plug our straight through cable into G001. Plug it into port 24 on our switch. I like to use that one because that's what I normally use for my trunking ports. That's my standardization. Uh, in the Cisco classes, we have a tendency to use port one. So really, it's a matter of personal preference or how you're gonna set up your VLANs. It's the reason I'm using port seven over here for this guy, because a lot of times I'll like to, I like to split those up and give the first five or six ports to the uh, VLAN one and then so on. So right now, my network is has been cable, but of course it's not gonna do any communicating because I do not have any uh, any uh, IP address is set yet. So first thing I want to do is I want to go into 2811 router. I'm going to click on the CLI tab right here, the command line interface. I'll press return and get started, getting myself into enable mode. Then get into my config T for my, my um, global configuration mode. And I want to change the name of my router. So I'm just going to do the host name command. And I'm going to call this one Cisco 2811 just like you have there in your in your lab okay now i want to program my interfaces while i have them here so i'm going to get in the interface uh let's do fa01 we'll do this guy first and then give it an ip address of 10.10 .10 we're going to give it a subnet mask of a slash 8, so it's going to be 255.255.255. Oh, my bad. 0.0.0. Okay, bring the interface up by doing a no shutdown command. Now I'm going to go into interface FA0 slash 0. I'm going to give it an IP address of 192.168. Dot 100 dot one with a slash 24 subnet mask that's going to be 255.255.255.0. Dot 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 Give it the no shutdown command to bring the interface up. Do a control R to bring myself back to my prompt. Hop over here to my my PC is on this half of the network. I'm going to give this guy 192.168.100.10. So go to my desktop, go to my IP configuration. I'm going to give it a static IP address of 192.168.100.10. So the mask is going to be default. My default gateway is going to be 192.168.100.1, which should be my router's interface. Go ahead and close out of that bad boy. Come over here to my 
4321. Again, I'm going to enable to privilege exec mode, then take myself over to my global config mode. And I want to change my host name to Cisco 4321. You notice there's no spaces in the names. You can't have spaces in your names. You can have underscores, but you can't have spaces. Now I'm going to go into my interface of G0 slash 0 slash 0. Put it on the same network as its cable. So that's going to be 10.10.10.2 because .10 .10 .10 the other one was 1. The subnet mask is 255.255.00. I'm sorry, 255.000. Bring the interface up. Go into the interface of G0 slash zero slash one. Um, oh, I went to it. I typed in interface. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Interface. Oh, I'm in the wrong mode. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so now we're in interface G001. IP add 172.32.0.1. It has a slash 16, so that's going to be 255.255.0.0. Bring the interface up. The interface is now up. You should see some green light, green lights there, and you do. See? Pretty cool. <clears throat> the switch is currently coming up right now. Let's go to our laptop. The laptop should be 172.32.0.11. Let's bring that up. 172.32.0.11. Default gateway of 32.1. Close out of that. Bring this guy up. Same thing. He's going to be .10. 172.6. Oh, I'm sorry. .32.0.10. Default subnet mask, 172.32.0.1. Close out of that, close out of that. Put my mouse over top of this real quick. I just want to check and make sure my, my uh, 32.1, 10 Yep, so we're good there. So now this network here, okay, can talk, but however, it cannot talk across the map just yet. Because we didn't put any, um, we didn't put a, we didn't put any um, routing protocols in, so the two routers can talk to each other. So we got to do that next. Let me exit out of that. Get ourselves into global config mode. We're going to go into router. OSPF two. Now we notice my router prompt has changed to config uh, dash router. And we want to put in the networks that we are direct that we are that we know about. So we are currently right now in the 2011 router. I know about this network here, and I know about this network here. So these are the only two that I'm going to put in. So I'm just going to say network 172. I'm sorry, that's 192. 192. 168.100.0. That's the network that I know about. Okay. Now, instead of putting my subnet mask in here, I'm going to put in what's called an inverted subnet mask. So basically, if I took my my uh, my subnet mask of 255 to 255.255.0 and I subtracted it from all 255s, I would end up with 0.0.0.255. .0 .0 .0 and then what area do I want to work with? Well, an OSPF, an area is that portion of the network, okay, that we're going to be working in. So in this case here, this whole thing, this whole thing is area zero. So area zero. 
no errors. That's a good sign. I also know about the 10 dot network right here. So we're going to do network 10.0.0.0 space. Now, if I subtract a 255.0.0.0 from all 255s, I would end up with 0.255.255.255. .255 .255. Area zero. So that's what I know about on that router right there. Go ahead, you can exit out of that. Close out of that config. I'm going to jump over to this config. We're going to do the same thing again. Exit out, get itself back into uh, global configuration mode. We're going to say router OSPF has to be the same, the same autonomous system number as the other one, so two. All right. Then I'm going to say network. And I know about the 172.32.0.0 network. My inverter something to mask on this would be 0 .0 0.0.255.255. Also, still part of area 0. I also know about network 10.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 .0. With a sudden mask of 0 0.255.255.255. Okay, area 0. Now, providing I got everything incorrectly without any typos, and I am king of typos, folks, I tell you. I'm going to do, do a simple command. Okay, you'll see here, it now just learned. Okay, from gigabit 000, okay, it learned about the 192.1 state that 100 network. Okay, it doesn't know or care about these PCs. All it needs to know about is this guy right here. And if you remember correctly, we didn't tell it. We didn't put in the 192 network on this side. This guy learned about the 192 network from him. This guy told him. So if we come over to this guy, you'll see he also learned about the 172.32 network from the other router. That means our two routers now have the ability to talk to each other. Okay. Now, now we have to enable, enable remote access. Now, we're not looking at remote access um, via, say, like running VNC or remote desktop. Okay, at this point, we want to be able to remotely connect to one of our routers, okay, without having the console into it. So, in order to do that, we had to set up our router here. So, let's look at our 2811 router, and we're going to set this up with, with remote access capabilities. Now, in order to do that, we have to give it a secret password so we're going to say enable secret that means we're going to make the password the enable password or the privilege that password we're going to make we're going to encrypt it the secret means we're going to encrypt it and the password we're going to encrypt is class so enable secret class make sure you don't have any spaces in there either after the class i know people who do that by accident then i'm going to say line vty zero space 15 that means i'm now going to set up the virtual terminals and i'm giving myself a range from zero to 15 for the number of simultaneous connections that i'm allowed to have now the first one i'm going to do i'm going to say transport input telnet now you typically wouldn't use telnet for one of our things because we normally don't like to do um, telnet when it comes to our our, um, our routers because it's just a it's a very um, poor security on our networks but we're going to do it anyway to show you how it's done the password is going to be Cisco so this is the password that we're going to use for telnet sessions only what kind of password is it it's our login password so you have to put login next then just say exit now we're out of that one okay let's get out of the, uh, the global config, and I'm going to do a show run command because I want you to be able to see that that is my password. That is the encrypted version of the password class. 
Okay. You'll see that I got my interfaces set up here. And then down here that I'm ready, I have my transport input is Telnet. And the password's going to be Cisco on that one. Now we left the Cisco there so you can see it. But if I want to encrypt that, I would just have to do uh, password uh, service password encryption. And it would just encrypt it all, encrypt all my passwords for me. Next thing I want to do is go to my 4321 router, and we're going to do pretty much the same thing again. Okay, so let's go over our 4321 to bring this over so it's in the view of our game here. We're going to get into global configuration mode. We're going to enable the secret password again. It's class. Told it to you like with the secret. Okay. And we're going to get into our line VTY 0 to 15 again. So that's our range, the, trans, the transport, so the type of packets we're going to send across these lines, on this case, is going to be not um, Telnet, but it's going to be SSH. The login, local, and we're going to exit out. Now, in order for Telnet to work, we have to give a username and a domain, a username and a password and a domain name, okay, for, for this to work. And then we have to create a crypto key. So let's go ahead and do that next. So we're going to say username, and you're going to use your name, not my name, your name. So I'm just going to use Mike. And then my password is going to be, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to make mine Cisco. What this does is this now creates a local database account for us to use. That's why we said login local, because that's when we log in, it's going to look to my new, it's going to look to my local database. This one right here, it's going to look to my local database for this username and password in order to be able to log in to this. My IP domain name. I'm going to make mine cnt.org. You can make it whatever you want. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be a real domain name out there. Then we have to create keys, encryption keys to use. So encrypto key generate RSA. Okay. Now you'll notice that you it says it says that we already have crypto keys generated. Do you want to replace them? We're going to say yes. Then it's going to say, how many bits do you want? I know the lab says to use the default size of 512. Cisco recommends you use 1,024. So we're going to go ahead and use with the Cisco recommendation. That's just me. Okay. Now you'll see it generated my, my 1,024-bit RSA keys, not exportable, to use for encrypting all of this. We're going to go ahead and say exit. And I'm going to copy the running config all the way to my startup config. And that means that I now just save this to my router's hard drive, so to speak, or what we call NVRAM. So at this point here, we should be able to look at all of our stuff. We see we got lights on all the way. Let's go ahead and close that out. If you have any problems, go ahead and check out your troubleshooting tips there. So now at the at the router prompt of one of my routers, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my 4321. And I want to do a show IP route command. Now you can see that I've got my connected routers, okay? That's my connected network. That's the connected link on my network, all right? And down here, this is a network I learned about through, see that O right there? Through OSPF, which is the routing protocol, which is the protocols that my routers are using 
to be able to talk to each other. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to you're going to copy this information into a text file and you're going to submit that to me so I can see it. Next thing we want to do, you can do some pings to make sure that you can ping across the networks. But then I, for remote access, which is what this is about tonight, we're going to do a remote access. We want to do a telnet session. Okay, so we're going to SSH into from PC1. We're going to telnet into the um, one of our into our 2811 router. Because if I was at work, um, I, I don't want to have to go. I keep my routers in a closet. I don't want to have to go plug into a router. So I want to open up this guy here. I'm going to the desktop. I'm going to open up a Telnet or SSH client. So I'm going to um, I'm going to open up desktop, which I did. Then let me make this a little bit bigger so we can all see what's going on. Okay. Then you want to open up your terminal here. Okay. And this guy here, this is this is what a um, oh wait, I think we have a telnet. I think we I think uh, I think this actually has a client for this. Let's look. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Telnet SSH client. We're gonna open that up. We're gonna use Telnet for this one. And we're going to go into the 192.168.100.1. We're going to go ahead and click connect. And you'll see, without being literally on here, I'm being prompted to log in to the uh the terminal so i typed in cisco you'll notice it doesn't show you typing your your password in you just make sure you type it correctly i'm gonna get into enable mode and i typed in class and now you see i'm in and i can go the whole way around nice and easy right cool i'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this and i'm now I'm going to see if I can go the whole way across to my 10.10.10.2 on SSH using Mike. And that should be, love that sound. Okay, and what you can see now is that I was able to log in to my router remotely the whole way across the um, the uh, the line. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close out of this uh, of this session, and we are uh, I'll publish this for everybody. Okay. Uh, go ahead and finish your lab, gathering your information, putting your end devices on there, uh, select the sniffers, and uh, gather up your protocols. That should be all you need to help program.